Hello. Effective communication is the key to the continued success of Delta. A clear understanding of our goals and objectives by all members of the Delta family allows each of us to focus on our individual efforts and then work together as a unified team of professionals. This medium of videotape is one means of communicating, and we want to take this opportunity to review some of the major events of the recent past and then to give you a brief view of some things to come. This past decade represented more changes in our industry than any other decade since the dawn of flight. As it began, our industry was just evolving from a tightly regulated environment to a deregulated one. Encouraging competition and creating a need for much closer attention to cost controls, scheduling practices, fare levels, and most importantly, service to our customers. We witnessed the unrest resulting from an illegal controller strike, major fare wars, new airlines coming and going, and the bankruptcy of long-established airlines. As the decade ended, we experienced the uncertainty created by the LBO, our leverage buyout activity throughout our nation. Our industry was not immune, as airline after airline was cited as a possible target. Delta was mentioned on several occasions as a possible candidate for an LBO, and this certainly was of great concern to all members of the Delta family and to our board of directors. We took some very important steps to help ensure the continued independence and strength of Delta. One was the employee stock ownership plan. It gives the Delta people a major stake in our future by being part owners of our company. Another step was the establishment of two important business relationships, one with Swiss Air and one with Singapore Airlines. Cross investments were made between Delta and these carriers. By this action, we affiliated ourselves with two of the very top airlines in the world. We also worked out joint marketing programs with both carriers. While these moves do not make us take over proof, they do go a long way to help ensure that Delta remains strong and independent. It's important that all members of the Delta family know that the board of directors and the management team of Delta are fully committed to keeping our company strong, independent, and growing. In 1989, we witnessed the strike and bankruptcy of a traditional and strong competitor of Delta and the resulting aftermath from that event. Many lives and families were disrupted. We all share in the sadness of those who lost jobs. And this causes us to refocus on the importance of working as one unit for a common cause and to value what we have here at Delta. Another area which received much attention in 1989 is our computer reservation system for travel agents. We've been very committed to strengthening and expanding our Data2 system. It's a vital part of our operation. During this year, we announced a planned merger of Datas II with the American Airlines Sabre system, but it wasn't to be. Unfortunately, the Justice Department was concerned about the size of that partnership. Rather than challenge their concern in the courts, we felt it was in everyone's best interest to develop another partnership. We did that with TWA, Northwest, and the PAR system. Now we're moving ahead with that giant step, which will provide a major international sales and distribution network to support our continued growth. We also took some very important steps internationally in 1989. We added Hamburg, West Germany as a new Delta international city. We extended our service from Frankfurt into our Cincinnati hub. And at the end of the year, we added a new destination in the Pacific as we inaugurated service to Bangkok, Thailand. Late in the year, we placed a significant order for new airplanes, additional Boeing 737-300 aircraft, and the new MD-90. The MD-90 is a derivative of our MD-88 aircraft using a highly fuel-efficient engine, the V-2500. This order, up to 260 aircraft, allows Delta to continue to grow into the 90s and maintain our position as an airline with a very modern and fuel-efficient fleet. 
It also positions us to achieve an all-stage three noise-efficient fleet by the end of this decade. 1989 was also a momentous period for the world in general. Faster than anyone had imagined, cracks appeared in the Berlin Wall, and then it began to fall. The relationship between the East and the West was changed dramatically, and many changes are taking place in the Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc countries. Very encouraging for our world, our country, and possibly new opportunities for our company. Now we face a decade of the 90s, and how does it look for Delta? I'm very pleased to tell you that I feel Delta is in a better position today to deal with the challenges ahead than ever before. The hard work and dedication of the Delta people are the cause of that optimism. As we enter this new decade, we will continue to build upon our domestic hub system. This is the core strength of Delta the way our hubs are geographically located and coordinated to utilize our resources in the most efficient way possible to serve our customers. We will continue to build upon this hub system in the 90s to strengthen it and to expand it, including our first transcontinental service between New York and Los Angeles in June of this year. We'll also continue to grow internationally in the 90s as we build our international route system to complement our domestic hubs. We have an excellent aircraft fleet for this expansion. Our current fleet plan provides for domestic and international growth, and it also provides flexibility so that we can adjust to growth needs or even recessions that may come our way during the years ahead. We will also continue to develop facilities that will serve our present and future needs, facilities designed to provide the ultimate in service and convenience to our customers. A key ingredient of Delta strength is our conservative financial posture. It's a mistake for any company, and particularly an airline, to get itself overly committed with too much debt. The management of that debt then becomes the primary focus rather than the true core of our business, which is serving the customer. We must maintain a conservative financial position in the coming years. We must work very hard to keep our cost in line. If we lose that financial edge, we will be weakened as a company, and the security and opportunities that we know as members of the Delta family will be no longer. So you will hear a lot in the 90s about cost control, about doing the job as efficiently as possible. Many carriers which started the decade of the 80s as strong, viable airlines are no longer in existence in 1990. Why? Well, there are, of course, many reasons. The most common, however, is simply the inability to control their cost and to produce a reasonable profit. As we reflect back on the 80s and look ahead to the 90s, our success as a company is based on the commitment of the Delta team to some very basic but very true principles. And the most important is the commitment to dependable, courteous, and caring service to our customers. Your commitment to service is illustrated day in and day out in many ways. One of the most meaningful, however, is the fact that for more than 15 consecutive years, Delta's had the fewest number of passenger complaints of any major airline. That's a fantastic achievement. Everyone has a role to play in this regard. No one can sit back and say, that's not my job, or that's not something that I need to be concerned about. As we continue to work together for the common goal, providing the best in customer service, I want you to know that the management of this company is committed to you, to keep the lines of communication open, to consider the effects on the Delta family before any decision is made, and to do whatever we can to foster the growth of our unique heritage and Delta spirit. Externally, we've been referred to as a quietly aggressive airline because we don't beat our drums about something we may or may not do. Instead, we quietly move ahead, we plan our strategies, and then we unveil them as we're ready for implementation. This allows us to keep our options open and reinforces our reputation as a dependable carrier, one that communities and passengers can count on. And while I like that phrase, quietly aggressive, 
I prefer that we be judged in the 90s as an airline that works hard to be good citizens of all the cities and countries we're privileged to serve, as well as an airline that keeps its word and takes its commitments very seriously. A major objective as we enter the 90s is not to be the largest airline in the world, but rather to be the world's most respected and successful airline. That's a goal that we can achieve if we all continue to pull together with a common focus and do our best no matter what the task at hand. As we face the opportunities and the challenges of the 90s, I want to say thank you to each and every member of the Delta family. I also want each of you to know that the reason Delta's future looks so bright is because of the confidence that we have in you. You are and will continue to be the reason for Delta's success. Your commitment to excellence in your individual jobs and to providing the best in service to our customers will ensure Delta success in this new decade and for many decades to come. As I mentioned in the beginning, communication is key to our continued success. Through our advertising, we communicate our unique philosophy and Delta spirit to the world. Once again, our friends at Entertainment Tonight have produced a program just for you. We hope that you'll enjoy it. Thank you.